full disclosure, I just woke up. I have no idea what day it is or even what year it is, actually. What year is it? Okay, it's still the same year that it was for the last year. Whatever year that is. So I'm going to do a bit of an introduction slash ramble that I think will be helpful. But first, some caffeine. Whenever you try to talk about and classify human personality, it's difficult. The archetypes and the functions are always going to be approximations. An extra layer of complications comes from the fact that everybody has a very individual way of understanding and explaining them. They're not very formalized, at least not yet. So my advice would be to study as many different sources as possible and to find your own way of explaining and understanding them. After all, if we're going to concede that personality types exist to begin with, then it stands to reason that not everybody is going to resonate with the same way of understanding them, or the building blocks that make them up. Some people will be able to instinctively recognize the types without really being able to explain how. Obviously that is not scientific, if I can even invoke such a word in this field, but it's not crazy either. Humans can naturally recognize, let's say, a cat. Even if it's a breed of cat we've never seen before, we still know what it is. I mean, usually. However, if you had to code or program a computer to recognize one, it becomes more difficult. To summarize what you're seeing, or easily recognizing, in the form of rules, often makes it more complicated. So the functions, in that sense, can be something of a double-edged sword. Yes, they give you more precision and specificity, but they can also be really confusing and overcomplicate things. So if you're struggling with the process of typing someone, including yourself, and you want to recognize the different types in the wild, it can often be useful to zoom out. An archetype is quite similar to a stereotype. So you can actually start with very simplistic ways of recognizing people. If someone is extremely impractical and always in their heads, that could be a useful indicator. There are many different factors that come into play, including mental health issues, that might make someone who is a certain type look like the archetype of a different type. So it is complex and complicated, but starting off simple can often be better. There is also this notion of relative typing. If you understand yourself very well, and it can often be hard to know whether you do or not, then you can use people's reactions to you as a way to classify them. If you consistently have bad interactions with some people, can't communicate with them and talk past each other, yet get along great with other types of people, that could be an indicator of those people's type. So using the functions is just another helpful tool. They're only useful if they're being useful. After all, the ultimate aim of acquiring this knowledge is to use it to better manipulate, I mean, uh, better interact with people in a wholesome and very good way. Intuitive. Both intuitive functions are concerned with finding the underlying idea of a thing, stripping away the specifics to find the conceptual underpinnings. That's where they both start. They do different things with it, but it's the same starting point. It's the same kind of thinking that happens when using an analogy. It's about drawing comparisons between things and seeing similarities. It's the process of transferring information or meaning from a particular subject to another. The specific details are changing, but the underlying idea is the same or similar. I would even say that if someone often uses analogies, that could be an indicator of their type. Of course, everyone does this. It's a natural and important skill in life. But types who have a high intuitive function prefer to think this way. What they gain in being able to spot these patterns, sometimes in very different and seemingly disconnected realms, they lose in the specifics. Some of the details are lost. And details, just like ideas, can be important depending on the situation. It is exactly the same process we use with personality types. You ignore lots of the specifics and the details that make a person who they are in order to see the underlying archetype or idea that best sums them up. Maybe that's why intuitive types seem to be disproportionately interested in this field. So that's a commonality between any and ni, and is part of what it means to be an intuitive type. Essentially, it's to think in ideas. Not exclusively, but as a preference. Everyone can think this way, it's just that some people prefer it, and highly intuitive types of both varieties love it. Branching. The process of using any is often described as branching. It's about starting off with an initial premise, then extrapolating and brainstorming from there. It's about branching outwards, generating possibilities. It's expansive in nature. It gains comfort from options and resists being restricted and limited. The process of NI happens in the opposite direction. It's about taking many different data points and finding the underlying commonalities between them. Sometimes drawing a line of best fit between data points, finding connections between seemingly unrelated things, but mainly, it's about reducing complexity. It's about simplifying things, getting to answers and conclusions. 
in this sense, NI gains comfort from settling on something. So you could almost see NE and NI as the same process, just moving in the reverse direction of each other. There is that question on the 16 personalities test and various other tests that many of you have probably seen that asks something along the lines of, do you prefer to have a settled course of action or to keep options open? That is simplistic, but it's a very useful distinction to make. It's important to not just focus on the cognitive process, but also the feelings associated with it. What gives you a sense of comfort and enjoyment and pleasure. If you're a high any user, this feeling of having multiple possible options is enjoyable. You feel more free and less hemmed in. Although there are drawbacks to it, it's a comfortable state of being for them. For a high NI user, having lots of unresolved or unrealized possibilities can start to get kind of stressful. So having more control, uncertainty, and even decisiveness is preferable for them. I've described ENTPs in the past as positional chess players, but you could apply that to all of the high any types. They want to place their pieces in such a way that maximize mobility every movement leads to more potential movement. High NR users might resonate with the phrase often used in chess that a bad plan is better than no plan. Having a plan allows you to coordinate your pieces together. They're more unified and connected. Even if the plan is bad initially, you can improve things as you're going along. It's better to point in the wrong direction at first, because that helps you narrow down what the right direction is. So in some sense, NE and NI are the same process, just reversed. Branching outwards or narrowing down. High versus low, NE and NI. If you're a dominant intuitive type, then you're going to be overly optimistic and ambitious with this function. If you're a type with an intuitive function as your lowest function, you're going to be more negative and pessimistic with it as a general rule. For example, with NI, ESTPs and ESFPs, who have this as their inferior function, will be more susceptible to the mistake of taking in lots of data, but drawing conclusions too simply, tying together a simplistic narrative to explain all of the data they've taken in. NI DOMs, on the other hand, so INTJs and INFJs, see patterns everywhere, but might make the mistake of not taking in an enough data to validate their intuitive leaps. With any ENTPs and ENFPs will equate seeing many possibilities with an increased likelihood of success. They assume that because there are so many ways to succeed, so many ideas, so much potential, that it increases the likelihood of those being actualized, whereas often the opposite is the case. ISTJs and ISFJs, on the other hand, will often be able to see lots of possibilities, just like ENFPs and ENTPs, but it seems to have more of a negative slant. They will see how things can go wrong. They'll be using their any to see the negative possibilities and pitfalls falls. It's almost like they use it to justify why changing things is often not a good idea. So high NE and NI types simply give too much credence to their ideas. Perfectionism. The NI brand of perfectionism is wanting something to be a specific way. It's having a plan or vision, even, that they don't want to deviate from, either because they just think it's the best approach, or they have some kind of attachment to it, or even comfort that comes from that feeling of being settled on something. If it can't be the way they want it, it can bother them quite a lot, at least when they're in a perfectionistic mood. The NE brand of perfectionism involves never being able to finish something because they keep seeing more and more options and possibilities, new ways of doing the thing they originally planned. They keep updating and reworking the original idea and adding more work for themselves until it becomes overwhelming. So again, it's this archetypical difference between being too narrow and too broad and suffering the consequences as a result. Those were my random thoughts on these functions. I'm the kind of person who will write down a few ideas and feel like that's more than good enough for a video. So this video isn't really exhaustive. There might well be a part two and three. And if people subscribe after watching this video, that is a very good incentive for me to make more. So feel free to do that should you wish. It makes a very big difference.